welcome back. Today we are going to start a new chapter, uh, but uh, possibly this is the most boring chapter we are going to uh, deal with. We are going to talk about uh, AC bridges and measurement of impedance. That means, uh, not just resistance, but could be capacitance, inductance or some combination of them. Okay. So, uh, let us begin. So, before we go to AC bridges, we will talk about uh, series and parallel equivalent of a practical inductance or a practical um, capacitor. So, so, when we draw this symbol, this is an ideal inductor. So, this is the symbol of an ideal inductor where this rule that uh, EMF or voltage is equal to L d i d t. So, this rule is true uh, with a proper sign. Okay. So, depending on which direction in which direction you are considering the uh, current and in which direction you are measuring the voltage. So, if, if I am measuring the current from left to right, this is I t and if I am measuring the voltage with left side as the positive and right side as the negative side, okay, then we have this relationship V is equal to L d i d t and this rule for an ideal inductor should be perfectly valid. So, this is an ideal inductor okay. but there is no ideal inductor in uh, reality. Why? Because any inductor is after all a coil made up of some conductor and any conductor is uh, any conductor must have some resistance. Okay. Any coil, any conductor must have some ohmic resistance. I mean nothing is like a superconductor in uh, reality. So, an practical in uh, inductor will always have some resistance which we can think uh, that this resistance is in series with the inductance. Okay. So, this call this R call this L and then the relationship between the current and voltage you can write it as Okay. Once again, if I take this side as my positive reference, this side as my negative reference, then one we can write that V t is equal to L d i d t plus R i. Okay. So, this is a practical inductor and we also know that uh, for AC, where I is sinusoidally varying. Okay. So, for special case AC, uh, perfect pure sinusoidal AC, okay. so that means these voltages and cur currents and voltages are all like sin omega t cos omega t, pure AC with angular frequency equal to omega, omega the unit should be radian per second then this relationship we can write uh, using phases like V will be equal to j omega l 
this is the impedance of this inductor plus R this is the resistance multiplied by I where V and I these are phasor quantities and this is the impedance of the inductor. So, this is what we all know and here uh, this resistance which is in series is quite intuitive it is easy to understand why do we have this resistance. This is because any conductor any coil must have some resistance some ohmic resistance which is intuitively should be in series with the inductance. Okay. But now uh, what I am going to show you is that is this an inductor pure inductor in series with a pure resistance okay, call this L S R S S stands for series because these two are in series is always equivalent to another circuit where we have this inductor in parallel with a resistance call this L P and R P P because they are in parallel. So, for so given a series combination of a particular value of L S and R S we can always find a value of L P and R P such that these two circuits are equivalent equivalent in the sense the impedance between these two terminals and the impedance between these two terminals is same. Okay. So, this is series parallel equivalence for an practical inductor. Now, how can we find the value of L p and R p if L s and R s are given or vice versa that is very easy. So, uh, consider this set this, uh, this uh, L s in series with R s. So, we can write the total impedance Z s is equal to J omega L s plus R s. Okay. And here for this circuit we can write Z p is equal to the total impedance of this should be 1 over 1 over R p plus 1 over J omega L p. Now, suppose this L s and R s are given and we want to find R p and L p. Now, this two to be equivalent we need Z s and Z p to be equal. If these two circuits are e equivalent, so from equivalence we can write that Z s should be equal to Z p okay, which implies j omega l s plus r s this should be equal to z p. Now, in place of z p we can simplify this and write. So, it will be j omega l p by r p plus uh, j omega l p. Okay. So, if you simplify this we will get this. Okay. Now, uh, from this we can write. So, let us let me take an inverse of this. So, 1 over this will be 1 over this. So, we can write 1 over R s plus j omega l s this should be equal to R p plus j omega l p whole divided by j uh, I will have an R p also here j omega L p R p. Okay. So, now from this uh, what can we write? So, we can uh, 
let us multiply here uh, with R s minus j omega L s in the numerator as well as in the denominator. So, the, the denominator will become R s square and minus this term square. So, minus j square omega square L s square. Now, minus j square is same as plus because j is root over minus 1 and the right side will be. So, if I divide R p divided by this, so I will have 1 over j omega L p this is the first term plus the second term will be j omega L p and j omega L p will cancel I will have 1 over R p. Okay. So, basically this, this, this side is now the uh, admittance okay, of uh, the second circuit of this R p parallel j omega L p and this side is actually the admittance of this circuit. So, 1 over imp impedance is the admittance. Okay. Now, from this what can we write? So, now let us equate the real part with the real part here, here and the imaginary part of this side with the imaginary part here. So, we will have so real part is R s divided by R s square plus omega square L s square. So, this will be equal to the real part which is 1 over R p and the imaginary part let us equate. So, we have minus j omega L s divided by R s square plus omega square L s square this will be equal to the imaginary part here which is 1 over j means minus j divided by omega square L p square. Now, this minus j and this minus j you can ignore. So, this implies actually uh, is that R p is equal to R s square omega square L s square divided by R s and from here we can write L p uh, L so let us I think this should be uh, there is no square there right. So, this is j omega l p j omega l p ok. So, always I suggest that you check my calculation if I do any mistake uh, you just correct it yourselves ok. So, here from this we can write uh, l p is equal to r s square plus omega square l s square whole divided by uh, omega square l s square ok. So, given r s and L s we can thus find R p and L p such that the parallel combination of R p and L p will be same or equivalent to the series combination of R s and L s. Note that the value of R p and L p depends on the frequency omega. Okay. So, this equivalence will be true for a particular frequency whatever frequency you choose it is not uh, true for all frequencies. Okay. So, for say 50 hertz uh, if you get some value of R p and L p for 100 hertz the value of R p and L p will be different. Now, let me just give you a small homework 
which is very easy to do. So, in here we have found the value of RP and LP given value of RS and LS. Your homework will be find the value of say RS and LS from the value of or from if the give uh, if the value of RP and LP is given from the given value of RP and LP. Okay. So, this is a small exercise I would like you to practice. Okay. So, now next thing we are going to talk about is capacitance, capacitors. Now, an ideal capacitor which we denote with just this symbol or maybe sometimes like this. Okay. For this, uh, no current can actually flow through one plate to the other through this dielectric because this is a perfect insulator. So, this is an ideal capacitor okay. and for this the relationships like uh, C is equal to Q by V from which we get V is equal to DDT of V will be equal to uh, 1 over C I T is true. Okay. This is perfectly true for a for an ideal capacitor okay. and where the current that flows is this I T or this I T no current goes through the insulator it flows only from outside to one plate and from the other plate to outside. And the voltage that we are uh, referring here is this voltage left uh, let me draw it here V t with this side positive and this side as the negative reference. Okay. So, uh, this is an ideal capacitor. Now, a practical capacitor uh, will always have some leakage from one plate to the other through the dielectric. Okay. So, a practical capacitor will always have some leakage current flowing from say this side to this side. And how do we model that leakage current? By giving a path for the leakage current path or a conductance in parallel to this capacitor. So, this is a conductor resistance and conductance are equivalent 1 over resistance is conductance. So, we are giving some conductance non zero conductance. Okay. So, non infinite resistance such that some current can flow from here to here. So, this is the model of a practical capacitor which is a parallel combination of a ideal capacitor with a resistor. Okay. So, And here the what is the uh, relationship between V and I. Okay. So, for that let us first find the uh, impedance of this circuit. Okay. So, and let us take for uh, simplicity let us take 
for pure AC with angular frequency omega ok. So, this part will have an impedance of called ok if this capacitance is C p if this resistance is R p p because they are in parallel then the impedance of this capacitor is 1 over j omega C p ok. So, this is the impedance and R p is same as R p the impedance of uh, resistance is R p. So, the impedance j p or instead let us write y p which is the admittance which is 1 over z p because in this case it is easier to uh, write in or think in terms of y p. So, this we can write the admittance of this which will be 1 over impedance that is j omega c p plus the admittance of this which is 1 by r p. So, this is the total admittance of this circuit and therefore, now you can uh, write V is equal to Z P. So, V is the phasor, I is the phasor or you can write this as V multiplied by Y P is equal to I. Okay. So, this is the relationship between voltage and current. Now, I am claiming that any such practical parallel combination of capacitor and uh, resistor is always equivalent to a capacitor in series with a resistor where I will denote the value as R s and C s respectively s for series. Now, so my claim is that any such parallel combination is always equivalent to a series combination. Now, how can we find the equivalent series combination? Once again the same trick. So, we have to equate the impedance of this with the impedance of this circuit. So, we can write so, for this we can write Z s ok which is uh, the series combination of these two. So, this is R s plus 1 over J omega C s ok. So, this is the admittance and now for these two circuits to be equivalent we can write that Z p should be equal to Z s ok. Now, Z p is 1 over R p or we write we can also write it this way uh, Y p is same as Y s. Now, given the values of Y p so C p and R p we can always find the value of R s and C s. Similarly, we can do it in the other way given the value of R s and C s we can find the value of C p and R p. Now, let us do it this way say the value of y, uh, C, C p and R p given and we want to find R s equal to how much C s equal to how much. Okay. So, you have to just manipulate this equation we have to do with uh, in a way such that the it becomes easy. Okay. So, uh, let us first uh, write it in terms of admittance or maybe in, uh, in terms of the yes I think it will be easier if we do it in terms of uh, admittance 
okay so we can write yp is equal to j omega cp plus 1 over rp and zs 1 over zs is ys so let us write Now, or let us do it in other way. So, let us write it in terms of impedance. Let us see which over is easy. So, 1 by j omega C p plus 1 by R p. This is same as R s plus 1 by j omega C s. Okay? So, this is the impedance this is also the impedance. So, from this we can write j omega c p r p j omega c p r p plus uh, 1 and here we have r p and then let us multiply this with r p times j omega c p r p minus 1 whole divided by. So, this will be square of this minus square of this. So, we will have omega square c p square r p square and uh, j square is minus 1 now let's equate the real and imaginary parts so rs this is the real part will be same as the real part here and here the real part is. So, we have uh, minus minus plus r p divided by 1 plus omega square c p square r p square and from the imaginary part we can write 1 by j omega c s this will be equal to minus j omega c p r p square. minus j omega c p r p square j omega c p r p square whole divided by 1 plus omega square c p square r p square. Okay? And from this we can write, so this 1 over j is same as minus j. So, then we can write this omega you can take from left to right side and then it becomes 1 over C s is equal to omega square C p r p square whole divided by 1 plus omega square C p square r p square. Okay. So, you can find the value of C s. Now, for you the homework will be given the value of R s and C s find R p and C p. Here we have found value of R s and C s from R p and C p your task is opposite. Okay. Now, in this uh, class we will define two more uh, terminologies. Q factor and D factor. This will be the last topic for this class. Okay. 
So, generally the word Q stands for quality. Okay. So, this is like a quality factor or you can call it I often call it this is a goodness factor. It is a measure of measurement it is a measure of goodness how good something is and D stands for dissipation factor. I often call it this is the degradation factor or a badness factor. Now, a small note uh, is that uh, the, the term Q factor in electrical engineering is often used in multiple context. Uh, it has it has several def, um, uh, definitions in several different contexts like uh, in, in the context of filters, in the context of resonance circuits and also in the current context which you are discussing. So, uh, you should not get confused because unfortunately the same name is used in different uh, uh, cases, different scenarios. Okay. Uh, now, this quality factor is normally used uh, for a practical inductor, although you can extend uh, this thought for capacitors as well, but this is normally used for, for stating how good an inductor is and this is d factor is normally used for a practical capacitor to state how bad a practical capacitor is. Now, if you think of a practical inductor which is always can be modeled uh, as a series combination of some pure inductance and a pure resistance. Then the measure of goodness is equivalent to the measure how ideal this inductor is. Okay. So, this goodness factor or Q factor will tell us that how close this practical inductor is to an ideal inductor. When it will be good then? It will be good only if this R s is small compared to the value of the inductance. Okay. So, goodness implies R s should be small compared to the impedance of this part j omega l s or if you consider the magnitude only then you can forget the j. So, this is the magnitude of the impedance of this pure inductive part and this is due to the coil resistance. There could be other factors too which we will talk about later. So, this impedance actually not only the coil resistance it, it, it also reflects other losses like core loss etcetera we will talk about that later right now ignore that. Okay. So, therefore, we can write that Q Q factor is the ratio of omega L s by R s. If R s is small, then this term will be large. So, quality will be better, it will be better. And alternatively, if L s is large, then also the quality will be better. So, this is how you can remember this. Okay. 
now so this is in terms of uh, so this is quality factor in terms of ls and rs now if we go back we have seen that any ls rs series combination can always be written as can always be modeled as uh, an lp rp parallel combination such that the value of lp and rp is like this so i i made a silly mistake here this uh, doesn't have a square here okay uh, this is omega ls and omega square is because of this omega ls should not have any square okay okay now from here we see that uh, rp by lp if, if we compute this quantity rp by lp then this will be same as so this two terms are same so they will cancel we will have 1 over rs rp is proportional to 1 over rs and in place of lp we can write this as omega square ls okay so now if we use this let me multiply uh, omega here and the omega here which will imply that i cancel one omega and therefore you see that we have omega ls by rs is same as rp by omega lp okay and this is nothing but the q factor which we have defined now quality factor is omega ls by rs and this is same as rp by omega lp therefore so we can write it like this as well okay so in the parallel combination q factor will be better if parallel resistance is higher compared to the uh inductance parallel resistance higher means no current will flow through the parallel path of this inductor okay so this is the definition of q factor quality factor and the way to remember it you remember that quality is a measure of goodness and goodness means how close this practical inductor is towards an ideal inductor an ideal inductor should have no resistance in series so rs should be small compared to omega ls so rs here should be small omega ls should be high similarly d factor this as i said is a badness factor or degradation factor you can call is normally used for a practical capacitor which is always lossy or leaky some current always flow through the dielectric which we model using this parallel resistance okay so now the badness is equivalent to how far this uh, combination this cprp combination is from a from a ideal capacitor so badness will be 1 over goodness and now goodness will imply how uh, how uh, how 
how ideal this uh, combination is which means this rp should be very high so that no current can leak through this resistance the conductance should be very small or this uh, resistance should be very high so goodness means the conductance that means 1 over rp should be very high compared to this conductance and this conductance is j omega cp okay so therefore the d or the badness factor will be given by so it will be bad if uh, this rp is small if rp is small more current flows so therefore we have it in the denominator and it will be also bad if this conductance conductance of uh, or uh, you call that susceptance of this part should is low okay if this is also low then we write it as like this okay j you can ignore because we are talking in terms of the magnitude only so this is the dissipation factor okay now this dissipation factor is in terms of rp and cp now we know that this is always equivalent to some cs rs in series what will be the value in terms of cs and rs that is your homework okay so in this video in this class we have learned two important uh, concepts number one series and parallel equivalence of uh, of a practical inductor or a practical capacitor and how to compute the series parameters if the parallel parameters are given or how to compute the parallel parameters if the series parameters are given this is one thing we have learned and the other thing which we have learned is these two terms new terms q factor and d factor the way to remember it is remember that q factor means quality factor which is a measure of goodness normally it is used for um, inductors and d factor dissipation factor is a badness factor and therefore q factor defines how close up and practical inductor is to a to an ideal inductor and d factor signifies how far a practical capacitor is from an ideal capacitor thank you